We're in the world, but not of it. Say that out loud. We're in the world, but we're not of it. Now, here's the deal. Is the world getting more of itself in on you? Or are you uh, staying more of Jesus in you and you're invading the world? You know, uh, how many of you have been on a boat, uh, a liner or a trip? How many of you have been in a fishing boat? How many of you walked on water yet? Okay. <laughs> but a boat goes on the water, but, and it works out fine. But if it lets the water get in it, it sinks the boat. You're in the world, but not of it. And you and I got to realize that this pandemic and all the stress and all the stuff, and what are we going to do? And the mask or not mask? Uh, Let's see. uh, uh, You know, I mean, I saw one the other day. Somebody had a mask on their ear even, you know. It's like, (laughs) you know, gracious, you know. Mask on everything. But we cannot worry about whether we're in the world. We're in it. But we're just not going to be of it. Amen. So I give you a caution coming ahead. I'm, this is a spoiler alert. You're going to like the message. It ain't going to feel good, but you're going to like it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is probably for you, not me. He's not talking about me. <laughs> Second Timothy says this. This know also that in the last days, are these the last days? Yes. Perilous times shall come. So why should we be shocked? Have you heard about the COVIDs? You know, did you get the COVIDs? No, have you, have you been bothered by it? Oh, we've got to be use a caution. Listen, if, if just because they started saying, wash your hands, this is the first time you've washed your hands, you're in trouble. <laughs> Hopefully you take showers too, you know. In the last days you shall have perilous times. That's these times. The passion says, but you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the peace of people of God. Say, that's me. I mean, that, that, that comes with a territory, but it does not shake our position, nor does it shake our attitude about those that are going through it and don't know God. They still need to know Jesus. Amen? While you and I are concerned with what's going on, our restaurant's not open and we can't buy but one package of toilet paper. There is real life-changing circumstances going on else in the world because of your faithfulness. So be, con- be, be encouraged by that, okay? Now look, look at this. I want, I want to bring you through these. I shared this with you the other day and you've read it on your own. But the passage says that the final days, the culture of the society will become extremely fierce and difficult for the people of God. This war that we're in is not about Democrat Republicans. It is about light and darkness. Face it. Get used to it. The message says, don't be naive. There are difficult times right in front of us. So everybody say, I face difficult times, but I am an overcomer. Help your neighbor out. Tell them to say it with more to you. I face difficult times, but I am an overcomer. Amen. The message goes on to say, as the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money hungry, self-promoting, stuck up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude chorus. When's the last time you've seen so much profanity on TV, on Facebook, in public, at the Walmart, at, at, you know, just ridiculous stuff. Pastor Rosella told us a story the other day. Last Sunday, she, after lunch, she went to a home uh, goods store and she was going. Last Wednesday, when was it you went? Where did you go? Part, and it, home goods store. I thought that's what you went to, yes. Um, you went to this home goods store and she got accosted by people trying to tell her, or with this one person, her mask had a certain statement on it uh, about America being great. Yeah. That's all it said. Yeah. Are you for that or against it? I'm for it. I live here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't care who said it. I'm for it. Yes. Yeah. But she got accosted for doing that. And then the woman chased her around and chased her around. And then, and then finally she just had to leave, you know. And, uh, but the world is going to be coarse, rude, and, and obnoxious. 
It goes on to say it's a dog-eat-dog, dog, unbending, slanderous, impulsively, wild, savage, cynical. Not only cynical, but, but they're going to be this. They're going to be treacherous, ruthless, bloated, windbags. If you notice that people don't like what you like, got a lot to say about what you don't like. They got a lot more words and all you have to say is God loves you and I love you and you can't do nothing about it. And you got to tell them, look, hey, your future's bright if you get out of that funky thing you're in right now, you know. But look at this, bloated windbags, addicted to lust, and allergic to God. That's the society we live in. Now, I'm not telling you anything new. You know all of these things. And uh, these, these can be, as Miss Cheryl said and, and uh, Brother Copeland said a couple of years ago, these can be the best of times. I'm declaring that in this house, they are the best of times. You should be the healthiest right now. You should be the most prosperous right now. Did you hear what the Zachowicz said? He, uh, he was on unemployment, and his unemployment check was really, really good. So he even notified me. He said, I'm going to be at church on Sunday, and I'm bringing some goodies. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be happy for him, would you? Come on. These are the best of times, but you've got to change your attitude about things. You got to realize that we're in the world, but not of it. We don't have to put up with the stuff that's going on here. Now, let me take you to Romans, if you'd be so kind to turn. Romans chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the little time I got left, I got to get your thinking, help you with your thinking, because it's not necessarily going to get better right now. You and I have to face the issue that there's still stuff coming. But I believe personally, and I'll say it to everybody watching. I'll say it to you all out there. I believe personally that these are going to be the best times of increase for believing believers and the worst time for non-believers. Pastor, that's too selfish. No, it's not. You get on God's side and I don't care where you're at. You can be in a desert and you'll prosper. The Jewish folks were sent back to the worst of the worst of the worst desert and they prospered. Brother Savell said years ago in Nigeria, the places around him, uh, down there, they were having such prosperity that Kenya, thank you, uh, in South Africa, in Kenya, the nation he was in, the point being that people were prospering. People who didn't have bicycles suddenly got bicycles. Crops across the street wouldn't grow. Crops where the believers were would grow. Well, shout amen, that can happen for you. Not one air conditioning unit, more than one air conditioning unit. Not one air conditioner in the, in the herb, in the truck. You can get a, a, a brand new situation. Say my situation can change. Amen. Look at this. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice of God, which is your reasonable service. goes on to say, and be, be not conformed to this world. But watch these words. But be transformed by the removal of your mind. Oh, I read that wrong. So you get to keep your mind as a believer, but you can have it renewed. Look to your neighbor and say, he's working on me now. I don't know about you, but he's working on me right now. <laughs> the renewal of your mind. The message says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. That's happening with Christians today. Well, we just don't know the world. You know, maybe they are right about all these situations. Listen, Jesus died for every color. Leave it there. This has nothing to do with pink, chartreuse, yellow, black and white. We're all, it has nothing to do. Jesus died for us all. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't become so well adjusted to the culture that you fit into it without even thinking about it. Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. The message goes on, the rest of this verse says, readily recognize what He wants from you and quickly respond, unlike the culture around us, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. That's the way they do it. 
if you fight them, if you, well, you you're just you're just racist. You're just you're just a name it claim it group. <gasps> yeah, and you are too. Because you're naming your situation and you're having exactly what you say. Don't let the culture drag you down to its level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you. Say, God brings the best out of me. You want to know a new friend, a real, real true friend? They bring the best out of you. You sit there and whine and carry on and they don't say, Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's just so tough. Oh, it's just, oh, it's awful what's happened to you. I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, you know what to say. Dry up, pal. Right. Cut it out. You know better than that. Amen. You got to, you got to, your best friend ought to be the one that encourages you the most. Amen. Don't dra- get dra- uh, drugged down to their level of immaturity. God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. The Passion says it this way in uh, Romans 12 too. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture. Come on. Well, pastor, we have to be tolerant. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. No, you have to walk in love. That's different. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Cheryl. She said that's different. I don't have to be tolerant of them. And the them is the wrong word. I don't have to be tolerant of anything or anybody that's contrary to the word. I can love them. I can help them. I mean, in South Georgia, we had an easy way out on that one. When something was different, that's exactly what we said. Well, bless your darling heart. That's different. (laughs) It was was a southern way of giving an insult. Well, that was different. (laughs) Look at this. Be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total res- re- reformation of how you think. You don't change how you think with more thoughts. You change it by what's on your inside coming up through your mouth, in the brain, but out in your mouth and saying it. How many of you have ever been guilty of uh, talking to somebody and all of a sudden you, something will come up in you and you'll say it and it's just what they need and you say I never thought of that before. Where did that come from? I say that quite often. I, I, I firmly believe the more word you get in you, the more word that will come out of you. The more of the world you get in you, the more of television you get in you, the more politics you get in you, the more nasty words you allow in your house, the more that will come out of you. Is this the right group here today? Okay. Now, let me ask you, how many of you have ever had a, uh, been going along and holding a cup of coffee and somebody bumps you or you shake you and uh, it spills everywhere? Have you had that happen to you? You know, you, you're walking along like this and somebody bumps you and it goes everywhere, you know? Uh, well, how, how about if we ask you this? Why did you spill your coffee? Why, why did you spill the coffee then? What's the reason? Somebody bumped you. Guess what? That's the wrong answer. Well, they did. They bumped me. Well, I got that. But why would you spill the coffee? You spilled the coffee because there was coffee in the cup. Can I help you? Had there been tea in the cup, you would have spilled tea. Had there been chocolate milk in the cup, you would have spilled that. Whatever is inside the cup is what's going to come out. You're in the world and not of it. So, <laughs> you have to ask, what's in my cup? When life gets tough, what spills out? When people put pressure on you, you got to make a decision. You got to change your thinking. You, you, get, you, you know, you get anger, bitterness, rash, harsh words, reactions, or does love, joy, peace come out? Or do you get to say, well, I'm seeing from a different perspective, way up high, this is not how this is going to turn out. You see, life will, essentially God provides a cup, but life will help you fill your cup with stuff. You and I need to decide, my cup runneth over with the things of God. Amen. 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 Therefore, I submit to you today as I uh, get close to maybe closing. 
I submit to you that as a Christian, you should never think about being average, normal, ordinary, lukewarm. But you should continue to strive to be radically abnormal. You know what the world looks at when it sees people who are successful and all? They see people who made a decision when nobody would encourage them. They stayed with the decision. Then when popularity came, they put that to the side because they had a higher goal to get to. They put that aside. They kept going forward higher, higher, higher. A winner of a race, a car race, a foot race, any kind of thing, is one who's known how to go past the limit of just getting across the line. It's in them. You can't get it out of them. It's there in them. And as a believer, we need to get so filled with the things of God that we're not going to miss out on what God's got prepared for us. We're going to move forward to a higher place in everything we do. That's why I say today, there's some changes coming. In fact, uh, this is one of the things we've said. New visions, manifested power, and great change. Well, quit resisting the change. Okay, we've had to make some adjustments. But the same joy that started the year off ought to be in you now. Amen. Yeah, but you don't know what I've gone through. I don't care what you've gone through. I went through it too. Yeah. Times all the number of you. You believe me? I've heard your stories. <laughs> and congratulations, John and Barbara. They, you ought to go see her story of their anniversary of this, how this guy pursued her. He's just old. I was going to say a dirty old man, but you weren't. You were just, you were just pressing in to meet that young lady, weren't you? <laughs> it's, they've got an anniversary, so be glad for them, okay? Huh? How many? Wow. Y'all don't look that old. Wow. Changes are ahead. Now, the walk of faith is daily, not something you practice every now and then. Faith is a daily thing. I'm not trying faith. I want to I press in and make sure that I know that I know this is the right thing to do and I'm going to do it because it is the right thing to do. You walk in love with people. You decide not to be offended. I don't have time to go to it right now, but Mark 11, wonderful statement of how to move mountains and dissolve issues and get them out of the way and all that. But the verse right after these great verses of how to say it, say it, say it, say it, and all that, it says that when you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, you do know praying is a part of what we do, don't you? Not desperate prayers, because he doesn't hear desperate, desperate just, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. No, he usually hears prayers of prayers of faith and you and I need to pray that way but it says that if you have all to give somebody forgive them get over it Amen. turn to your neighbor and said he said get over it so that's what we got to do now here's some good news if God has determined to stand with us tell me who then could ever stand against us that's the good news of the morning today. We're in the world and not of it, but we're moving forward to bigger, better things. Amen. Now, uh, hallelujah. Let me see what I've got to whittle this down here because you guys are already looking like your lunchtime has come. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you what we do, Miss Charity. Miss Charity is so good to help me back there. Hallelujah. Let me just reemphasize this. This. Turn with me, if you would, to Mark. Uh, if you would, the book of Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Mark, Mark, okay? And in Mark, we find this. In chapter 11, Jesus said this. It's what I was just referring to. Answered, said to him, have faith or have the faith of God. In the time we're living in, you ought to be getting things, scriptures, and, and, and working on things in your life that give you more faith to believe God. I mean, think about it. Many of you in this room have not worked in weeks and months. But you still got clothes on your back. Hopefully you got, were able to take a shower and wash your hands. You got your clothes clean. And it doesn't look like any of us have missed meals. I mean, the COVID look before and after COVID is quite sizable. <laughs> it's, you went to the back end of the closet and got those clothes that way back there that you had to wear. 
I'm telling you, it's happening. It's happened. Here's what he said. Have the faith of God. Whosoever shall say, one, this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said, saith, saith, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you die, when you pray. How many of you have a routine of praying? You do, honestly. How many of you are not going to raise your hand no matter what I say? Okay. Believe, thank you, that, that you receive them and you shall have them. Verse 25, and when you stand praying, forgive. Yep. Forgiveness is the attitude of, I'm going to wake up every day with a spirit of forgiveness on my heart. I am not going to start this day out thinking about that stupid thing somebody did to me because they didn't do it. You took offense. Whether they did, oh, they're going to get away with it, right? No, God has a way of helping them just like he did you. When you pray, forgive them. It sets you free. Amen. Glory to God. I'm telling you, I've had conversations in the last couple of months and texts from people. And uh, I made a decision this past week with my blog to uh, contact some folks that uh, weren't necessarily always the nicest. And uh, I, I've just had to just work my way through blessing people. I love it. Because now I, I don't think of them as being a problem. I just think of, well, bless their darling hearts. I've got my part done. And you mean they don't have to come to you and kneel before you and ask you to forgive them? No, it's over with on that. When you stand praying, forgive. If, they, if you have all against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. And that is wonderful to know that. Amen. The, uh, another translation, Passion, says, but if you will not release forgiveness, let it go. Shout it out loud. Let it go. Don't expect your Father in heaven to release you from your misdeeds. It is the way we're going to get through all of this stuff. There's a higher level of things coming to us. Amen. Miss Charity, take me, if you would, please, down to uh, right before our confession. Okay, there's a Jesus statement there hallelujah you getting anything out of this yeah. we've had prayer today we've given we've had some great uh, faithful songs uh, I want it to bless your week because you're going to face some things this week but you know what it's going to be high sailing you're going to be at the top of the wave because you can see because you, you, you know how the thing's going to come out yes. even if you go through one of those you know plagues that Israel went through and all of Egypt went through. We still going to get through it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. You needed this today. Stand with me if you would. I want you to make this confession with me this morning. Hallelujah. And I've written a few different things in it. Help your neighbor up if they can't get quite get up as fast as you can. And those of you watching, get up off the couch, okay? Just... <laughs> Just get up off the couch and join us. You'll like it. We're not going to make you dance. We couldn't see it anyway, but it might be fun if you did, you know. <laughs> Here's our confession this morning. I am a believer, not a doubter. So today I boldly declare again out of my mouth, God has great plans for me and none of his plans have defeat. I'm so thankful that the next 158 days of 2020 will also be so very, very glorious. My future is still full of visions, dreams, and great changes of increase. Say it again, great changes of increase. Great changes of increase are coming my way. Go ahead and laugh now. Ha, 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 ha. Turn to your neighbor and laugh. Go, ha, ha, ha. My future is so very bright. I declare there is a great blessing on me and my family and on this church. I absolutely rebuke all sickness, disease, poverty, lack, confusion, stress, and despair. I speak life into my family, my kids, and my grandkids in Jesus' name. I choose to live by faith, always walk in love, 
praying so, so that we can know how wonderful a Savior Jesus is. So I boldly say, get a breath. Come on, ready? I am a believing believer, not a doubt. Say it this way. Look up here. I want you to do it this way. I am a believing believer, not a doubter. Let's say it again with some force. Now get some air. Ready? I am a believing believer, not a doubter. So I shout. Thank God. Thank God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. I have an overcomer. Thank God. Thank God. As you lift your hands, know this is a truth. I've said it for over 20 years. Anytime I've ministered somewhere in the 23 different nations and all the places we've gone, I've said this for years. You have great favor upon you. You have great wisdom upon you. You have great increase making its way into your life, spirit, soul, body, financially and socially. And you have wholeness in your body and boldness on your lips. Amen. Do not deny the boldness coming out of your lips. Because if you start denying it and going, well, I don't want to offend anybody, you need to, you know, don't spill your cup and say, well, you bumped me is why it happened. It's called what's in you is not enough. Bonus comes from what's in you. Amen. Not become, because of who you are. Bonus becomes because you are convinced that the word of God is the truth. Amen. And Jesus is Lord. Amen.